So uh, the last topic, uh, there was something you, you mentioned in the, um, you know, and this is something that tends to come up a lot too when people are discussing worms. They'll say, oh, you have to have red wigglers. You know, night crawlers aren't the same thing and you gotta have the right kinds of worms or your compost isn't gonna work. So in, in this chapter, you talk about worms and say there's three different kinds of worms. So we can talk about that a little bit. Okay, okay. And the the earthworms a lot of people think about are, are the, the night crawlers. The big ones. Uh, the big ones. The big ones. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a fisherman, that's what you want because it's easy to get on the hook and it looks like you've got a whole lot of bait there when you've got a, a big night crawler on the hook. We used to uh, uh, sadistically divide them up into little, you know, inch and a half long pieces. <laughs> or things. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. If, if you're... Uh, if you're frugal, if you want to get as much bait out of one worm as you can get. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those worms, uh, I guess first thing is in North America, all the worms are introduced. Oh, really? Or at least in Northern North America, in Canada. Okay, talk about that a little bit. That's interesting, what do you mean? Uh, you, you think about after the last ice age, when there was a mile of ice on top of us, there was no earthworms living in the soil. Okay, that's a good point. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and various ice ages have covered a lot of North America. Right. So most of our, our earthworms are, are introduced and certainly dewworms or night crawlers are, are introduced. Uh, the, the neat thing about night crawlers is they form vertical burrows. They will have, you know, a whole half a centimeter across uh, going straight up and down, and uh, you know when the conditions are right, they'll come up. Uh, they'll most times anchor their anchor their butt in the top of the hole and reach out as far as they can and pull stuff back down to their hole and make a little midden on top. Right. Yep. I've seen that. Uh, seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've you've probably seen little piles of bean leaves. They love bean leaves. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, the. Uh, you know, and they'll, you know, that'll be a store of food for, for hard times. And it also is sort of an air conditioner for their burrow. It helps to keep things moist down there. And then if it gets too cold or it gets too dry, they just go down to the bottom of the hole and they seal themselves off in the bottom and they stay there. Right. And they'll be down, you know, three feet, four feet. That's uh, oh, yeah. Below the frost line. Below right. the frost line. Right. And, and where the soil always stays moist. Right. Which you know, is what they, they want. They, yeah, they breathe through their skin. Yes. You know, yeah, a dry worm is a dead worm. Right, their lungs are on the outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, they they do a lot of activity, uh, but they're, uh, the biggest thing they do is they, they increase the permeability of the soil. Right, with the holes, you know, with the burrow. With the holes. So, you know, if you get a heavy rain, lots of places for water can go down the hole. Right. Uh, there's some forest ecologists just shudder when we talk about how good earthworms are because when we say you know they'll they'll pull all the leaves into a little pile over their midden and uh, they will do the same thing when they get established in a hardwood forest and leave the ground bare oh really and and so a lot of the uh, the spring wildflowers actually need that mulch of leaves on top to get going so right. uh, yeah they're they're not all good. <laughs> they can be that successful that they, they literally take all the leaves? Uh, enough that it, you know, limits the, uh, the you know. Mulching ability. Li limit, the limits the mulching ability. So, you know, a, a trillium may have a hard time getting going. So. Oh, really? You know, our, our you know, drifts of white trilliums in the spring might uh, become <laughs> less common. Right, so, right. Anyway, that's, that's the one, the one type that we call the anisic earthworms, the, the vertical burrowing ones. Uh, a second group actually, they they burrow horizontally, but they're mostly in the organic layer on top itself. You know, they they would be the ones that would be more common in a forest, right. or in a mulch layer. Right. Uh, they're they're really in in the organic material and uh, and not going into the soil very much. Are the red wigglers that that kind uh, of form? The red wigglers are actually a. Uh, in the third group. Okay. All right. I'm getting ahead of myself. Again. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be, you know, in the topsoil and burrowing horizontally and coming up to the surface, but mostly going back and forth horizontally. Okay. The, the night crawlers, they tend to 
if you like, eat organic material directly, right, and poop it out. Uh, uh, the uh, the red wrigglers and the other worms that are are in in the soil burrowing horizontally, they will eat what's in the soil, uh, so it uh, and ingest quite a bit of soil at the same time. Right, and uh, you know. It may be bacteria they're digesting, it may be fungi, it may be uh, plant materials, it may be plant roots, they're, they're sort of non-specific, uh, and digest it and mix it up and, and poop it out the back. Oh, so they're the ones we think of as the, the rototillers, like they're yep. the ones that yep. people think, um, so the red wigglers are more likely to do that. And I yes. think in, <clears throat> in, your, in your book you were saying like of those two types that were not the nightcrawler types, um, one of them is very rarely in your garden. It's more in natural systems. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that would be the ones that are in the mulch layer on top. Right. So could you get them? Like if I went into the woods and just grabbed a bunch of, you know, oak leaves or maple leaves off the ground and, you know, sort of scooped it all up into a bucket and threw it on my garden, would I be getting some of those guys in there? Yeah, you probably would if you got, you know, you'd want to get a little bit of the soil at the top right. to make sure you got that, that layer. After a good rain yep. or something like that. After a good rain. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, why, why are red wigglers more likely to be in a garden than those those forest worms? I'm just calling them that. because <laughs> The forest, yeah, that's as good a term as any. Okay. Um, even in a forest, those ones that are just in the mulch layer aren't going to be a large part of the population. Right. They're pretty specialized. Okay. Um, and it's, yeah. It, it's a smaller chunk of the ecosystem they've got to live in. So they've, they've got less opportunity and a lot of gardens, you don't have enough mulch there to, to keep them going. Right. You know, it, it's, it's right. becoming more common that we're, we're mulching our gardens that there's See. always organic material on top. Traditionally, if it was bare ground, there's no, no place for them to live. Really? So if you let that mulch go and I, I've got a couple of my beds, they've gone bare. Can they hang out for like a week or so? Like, they must. Yeah. They're really doomed. If they're, if you, yeah, if they're you totally bare. Go. Yeah, yeah. If they're totally oh. bare, they're 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 probably uh, not going to survive. Do they go somewhere or, or, else? Or, they're, they're or they have, or they they have done what uh, what their colleagues do that you know that do burrow horizontally in the soil. They'll just find a find a spot below the surface, curl up into a little wee ball, sort of line themselves with mucus and make like a little cyst. And hope they don't die while they're waiting for another yeah, mulch hope, delay. It, it, hope, hope it slows down the drying out enough that they can hold hold out until the next time conditions are favorable. What are those worms doing? I mean, so our night crawlers go down three, four feet. What do those ones do in the winter? Uh, yep, they, they hibernate near the surface. They can just take it. They can, they can take it. Uh -huh. They'll be in that little, little cyst. Now, uh -huh. a, a lot of them will die out. A lot of them will... You know, it will be the eggs that survive and then patch in the spring when conditions are right. I should ask you since I got you here. Sometimes when I'm like, you know, I'm in the soil with my hands a lot. And sometimes um, in the soil, I'll find these little yellow balls. Um, they're small, but they're large enough to, to, to see, to pick up. And if you mm -hmm. squeeze it, it goes. <laughs> so it's like a hard yellow ball it looks like a oh what, so what, what size is it um maybe a, a millimeter in diameter a sphere a, a, not a ball mm -hmm. but a sphere mm -hmm. a hard yellow sphere is that a worm is that a snail is i mean it's a it's an egg of something because it, 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 it yeah <laughs> it yeah it, it could be an earthworm egg although it could be an earthworm egg could be snails uh, it almost looks like a stone, but then when you squeeze, it's perfectly round. It's too round to be a stone. And when you squeeze it, it goes. Squeeze it, it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I always wonder, what am I killing when I squeeze those things? I don't, it's not like I'm looking around for there's millions of them, right? But when I see them, I'm like, what's that? Whoosh. Oh, what did I just kill? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll admit, I, I don't know my, my taxonomy enough okay. to know for sure what that <laughs> <Sorry>. might be. <laughs> yeah, okay. If anybody knows what I've, uh, you know, what I'm just killing out of curiosity, please. Um, I, my guess is it's either a worm or a snail or something, you know, yep. something. But yeah, I hope I'm not killing anything particularly. I probably am killing something good. <laughs> All 
All right, so that's our earthworms. I think you know. I think that's that's pretty good. I think we've you know sort of covered everything. Um, I guess one one question I might ask is you know is it worth buying? I mean, I think my guess Robert Pavlos will say, look, if you if you create the conditions, these things just show up. Um, but is is it worth? And I've had different viewers say like where they live, there's just no worms. I, I think someone, one of my viewers from California recently said like, there's no worms where I live. We have to buy them. They just won't show up like they do where you live. Um, is that, uh, why would someone consider buying like a, a thousand red wigglers in a bag? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the, the quote I like to use is from Field of Dreams. Okay. If you build it, they will come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most, most times, you know, uh, 95% of the, you know, situations there there's a small population there hanging on and if you give them the right conditions that that population will multiply right uh yeah you, know, you uh, have to be a pretty bad environment I mean, you could go to pripyat which is the town where the chernobyl disaster if you go there you'll find worms so it'd mm -hmm. have to be a pretty bad situation for there to be no worms. You'd have to just completely destroy the soil and turn it into dust or sand or something like that. desert, perhaps. Well, and and the conditions, you know, if if we're thinking about a North American audience, the conditions that would be really bad for worms uh, would be it gets too cold in the winter. So, like northern prairies, right. There's probably not a native earthworm population there because they don't survive. Right. So something else is filling that ecological niche other than earthworms. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, or it could be too dry. Right. You know, you know, so, so if this fellow in California was you know, in the Anza Borrego Desert, well, no, there, uh, there would be no native earthworms because it's too dry for them to survive. Right. Uh, there would be no earthworms nearby that could migrate in because it's, you know, 500 miles to the next area that's uh, that's suitable for them. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. If you, yeah, you're building a raised bed in a pretty arid, arid place. Yeah, and you really you're want to have earthworms, you, you, yeah, you would have to bring some in. They're not going to come. You've got to bring them. <laughs> You've got to bring them. It's unlikely but, that they'll come. But that's that's the exception, not the rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, I know when I first built my garden here, I didn't, I mean, it's all just, it was, uh, what do you call it, builder's loam? It's just, you know, <laughs> the, yep. the stuff that dump trucks dump to build houses on top of, just clay and rocks and stuff. And there was not a lot, I mean, there was worms around, but like if you, if you had a, a four by eight garden and you turned over the soil and half of that, you might find a worm or two. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, if I jam my hand in and pull it out, there'd be a worm in my hand, right? Yeah, um, yep. just from adding all this, just building it, and they could, but there there was worms there. I just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I I built it, and they came, and there was a surrounding. I mean, there was a worms around, but that that initial piece of land was not a great place to be. There was just wasn't a lot going on that would be an interesting tool worm. And as I added different things, and I added a lot of when I first built it, a lot of horse manure, like mm -hmm. you know, truckloads and truckloads of horse manure to get things started, which really. For anyone that's starting off with crappy soil, it's a, probably the cheapest shot in the arm you can come up with to, you know, sort of solve that. It's all clay and rocks and stuff like that, and you're trying to loosen things up. And um, it's, you know, it's pretty good because you can't over over manure with horse manure. It's such a weak manure. It's a good. It's it. It's it's much more difficult anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. You you did talk a bit about though about worms, you know, for composting. Yes. You know, and and vermicomposting is a is a very specialized little niche. Right. Um and the conditions in a in a vermicomposting pile may not be like they won't be the same as in a garden soil. Right. And and for that, you know, you may want worms that are specifically adapted for that. Right. Uh, something that's a little you know, used to a little higher temperature, a little higher salts. Right, right. That can take you know, that. A little, that can take that. I see. Um, I would also, yeah, want to be careful about, you know, just dumping that out into the garden without right. taking, you know, screening the worms out. Right. Um, 
I know I don't know a lot about them. I have seen some posts about, uh, you know, in the southern states, they're getting in uh, invasions of, they call it a jumping worm. Jumping worm? Yeah, yeah, which uh, apparently is not good. I don't, like I say, I don't know enough of the details, but it's, it's an invasive species, so. Are they, do they attack other worms? Are they some sort of like worm, worm predator? Or are they? I'm not sure if they're a worm predator or if they just, they actually have a taste for uh, garden plants. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. That's not good at all. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you probably want to stay away from that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. And, and, and yeah, in anything, any case like that, you want to be careful, you know, am I bringing in an exotic? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's so that's the reason for trying to you know as much as possible to work with the native populations and build them up. Yeah, just yeah, you know, build it and see what happens. And you know, if you're if you're four mm -hmm. years in and you got no worms, maybe you want to think. But even then, yeah, you probably want to go to your local garden center and you know, hopefully they've got something that sort of works in that area that's local or relatively local. Um, uh, or or or, uh, yeah, or go to the bush or go to a a neighbor who's got a good garden with worms and just get a shovel full of soil. Yes, there you go. There's a simple solution. And there's a cheap <laughs> one too, which is right out yeah, of my own yeah. heart.